Um, so yeah, Morton um, has covered nicely one half of uh, a job of an economist, uh, looking into the crystal ball and trying to see the future. I'll now don't, won't try to look into the future too much. I'll try to look uh, at the other half of the job of an economist, trying after the fact to look for the reasons why something happened. Um, because as you can see, from this chart, probably the name of the uh, title suddenly became clear. I don't have 50 countries here with different shapes of the recovery. I have only 10, but I think 10 will be enough uh, to illustrate how uh, wildly different the performance of different countries has been in, in, in only the past half a year. And um, from the Q3 onwards, um, I have um, uh, projections by uh, myself and my colleagues at the bank um, what uh, we currently expect the recovery to look like. And I, in this presentation, want to look uh, at the reasons why this performance has been so wildly different because, as you imagine, uh, uh, the economic shock has been very similar across the countries. A, a pandemic has hit countries and countries have been forced to take action to restrict economic activities in order to stop uh, health crisis from happening. So uh, without further ado, I'll try to look at the reasons why uh, the performance was wildly different. First of all, a fairly obvious reason is uh, the health situation. The worse the health situation, the worse uh, is the confidence in the economy. People are more afraid, uh, they delay investments, they stop consuming, they save more. Uh, they cannot go out, um, and therefore economy is stopping by more. Uh, so the first one is, is very, very obvious, and uh, it's not uh, a perfect correlation, but usually countries with worse economic, uh, with worse health outcomes had also worse economic outcomes. The second one is very related to, to the first one, is how countries reacted to the health crisis. Here you can see the stringency in index by Oxford Economics. It tried to track how, how tough the restrictions were, how tough were the lockdowns, how tough were the quarantines, and you can see I picked several countries with different strategies. You saw China that cracked uh, very hard and very early, and many countries copied that strategy. And it seemed that they were rather successful. You had um, uh, countries like Sweden, that, who is uh, sort of an outlier with a fairly mild lockdown. And uh, at first it was um, just a curiosity. Then the country was very criticized for its lenient uh, policy. But now it would seem that uh, as the cases are resurging, it's again not clear which strategy was the most successful and we'll see in, in probably when all this uh, pandemic situation blows over then in retrospective we can evaluate which strategy has been uh, uh, most successful but overall the decision was do we take a very painful hit in the short period of time and can take uh, the disease under control or do we spread it out and we have a more chronic pain over a longer period of time? And these strategies have different outcomes. They change the shape of the recovery, but it's unclear which strategy would be the best at the moment. Apart from the health situation, the, mm, the structure of economies matter. What types of goods we produce? Are we a service economy? Are we a goods economy? How dependent are we on tourism? All these things matter when, uh, uh, when we're facing a shock such as this. For example, in Lithuania, there's some sort of anecdotal evidence. For quite a while, we have been um, quite bashing ourselves that we, we don't have enough higher value added manufacturing, that we have this sort of low to medium value manufacturing in, in food industry, in, in uh, furniture, etc. It turns out in pandemic, that's great because people need to eat. They found themselves locked down at home without a office desk and suddenly they need uh, to do homework with their children and work from home. Furniture has been doing very greatly. And, um, countries that had non-cyclical industries that 
for whom demand does not change whether it's good times or bad times, uh, then um, that made the Lithuanians' performance better than average. Uh, no one is buying cars uh, when they are locked down in, in the quarantine. That also means that no one's buying car parts from uh, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, etc. The countries that are very integrated into German automobile cluster and a lot of people were envious in Lithuania for them because they have been earning good money, but now their integration into these uh, sectors has been uh, a serious disadvantage. Other things like um, tourism uh, and, and balance of, of tourism services also mattered. In La Italy suffered a lot because they depend on tourism a lot. Spain suffered a lot because they depend on tourism a lot. Germany, Sweden, Lithuania, not so much. So on, on the net basis, we uh, either suffered not a lot or just a tiny bit because of, of lost uh, tourism revenues. Um, so I cannot go into every reason, and there is uh, um, anecdotal evidence for every country why they suffered more or, or less during this pandemic. But uh, the main outtake is that structure of how we earn our money in every country mattered in determining the damage. Second, Hansen um, Morton tried, uh, uh, not, not tried, but started talking about this, is um, how sustainable was the business cycle before uh, entering the, the crisis. And he rightly pointed out that Baltics were very, very balanced in uh, just before the pandemic hit, uh, this is an index we do measuring the sustainability of the business cycle, how overheated the, the economy is, so you can see the stark difference between 10 years ago and now. Uh, the economies were in very balanced state and that meant that we were very well prepared to face any challenges uh, presented by the pandemic. Um, also. What we saw is um, another thing that matters a lot is debt, of course. Here I highlighted more uh, private debt rather than uh, public debt, because I feel that in, in these sort of situations, first and foremost, the private debt matters more when the economic shock hits. And luckily, the authorities, the central banks, the, um, the budgetary institutions have acted very uh, very quickly this time around, and they learned from mistakes of poor policy in, in the last crisis, and um, they really managed to make it so that financial crisis did not happen on top of it, because we would be much more gloomier now if, if a lot of money had not been poured into our economies, if uh, there were no tax relief, if there were no liquidity support, etc. And you can see the extent of money the five main central banks of, of developed world have uh, uh, poured in, in the last half a year. The money supply, uh, bank reserve uh, supply grew by around 20% in, in uh, a record period of time. And you, as you can see, initially there were a lot of fears in, in, in the interest rate markets which very quickly signal the stress and, and, and fears of, of the business world. And uh, Euribor had started rising quickly because people were af afraid of, of a financial crisis. And then by, by half of the year, everything has calmed down. Financial markets are no longer expecting any financial trouble in, in Europe. You could look at various different indicators to, and they would signify the same thing. So monetary stimulus has been very successful. Of course, it has side effects. We are seeing uh, assets, some asset prices disconnected from, from the economic reality, but uh, overall uh, the policy has been quite successful in containing the damage. And finally, we're, this time around we're seeing not an austerity policy, but fiscal authorities also had learned some uh, for, from their mistakes uh, from uh, the last crisis where uh, fiscal policy was really inadequate and meant that uh, growth was much slower in Europe than in other places where fiscal policy was present. And here I disagree with Morton. 
I feel that uh, European uh, Recovery Fund was a necessary um, thing because uh, Morten very nicely highlighted the benefits of the Euro and I feel that without some fiscal transfers in, in the European Union, Euro would be no more because Italy, Spain uh, would really question whether uh, fiscal constraints brought by, by being in the Euro are worth it when they really are in dire need of, of having um, more ac accommodative fiscal stance. So as you can see, countries do have varying fiscal firepower and, and Germany was really, uh, really impressive in, in shooting all the cannon, fiscal cannons they have. Uh, and that would all have further exacerbated the differences between uh, countries' performance. Countries such as Germany, they had suffered relatively less damage due to the economic structure, and they have more fiscal firepower, therefore they would recover quickly than the countries that were hit the most. So the role of the recovery fund is a very important because it sort of smooths out a little bit the differences between the country's ability to spend and that has a very important role in managing to keep European business cycles synchronized, meaning that some countries are not shrinking while others are growing. That means that the general policy of the Euro area fits for every country and that it makes sense for every country to be in the Euro because Euro is a very beneficial project However, it is not complete and it's all, always under some risk of breaking up. So this is a very important step in, in completing the institutional design of, of the European Economic Union. Um, what's next? I've, I've showed you some projected paths how, how eco economies could recover, but it's not set in stone. Every factor that has been relevant up till now will be relevant for, for the time to come. How quickly the treatment will come, how successful and efficient monetary and fiscal stimulus is, um, how will the trade war look, how will the Brexit look, uh, how will the US uh, elections look, all these uh, factors will determine how the shape of the recovery will look. Currently, economies are recovering quite quickly and, and uh, a lot of economists are getting more optimistic than they were three, four months ago. Here you can see a economic activity indicator uh, I, I tried to do in, in the midst of, of a quarantine uh, because as you some of you might know economic data is very, very lagging. We were running completely blind and we tried to, uh, to find alternative data how to, to see how economy is doing. So this uses a lot of bank data, a lot of public data. And we currently see that economy is on a good track. We'll see how it um, goes um, in, in autumn and during winter, but so far there is um, reason for optimism, but um, of, of course the times are very, very uncertain, and I think you'll have questions for, for the panel discussion. Thank you very much.